Welcome to AI News of the Week in 20 minutes or less, and usually in under 10 minutes. Today, we've got a bunch of amazing stories to celebrate Leap Day. That's right, it's February 29th, a special day we have only once every four years, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm Jonathan Green, host of the Artificial Intelligence Podcast and author of the bestseller, Chat GPT Profits, which is, of course, a sponsor of today's video. You can get Chat GPT Profits absolutely free by clicking the link right below this video. As always, there were dozens of stories this week that didn't make the cut. We only cover the stories that affect how you can use AI to run your business because my goal is to give you as much information that's useful for your life in as little as possible. Let's get into it. Today's been quite a big week for stories that probably slipped through the cracks. Instead of some major stories, we have a bunch of small stories that are all really important and really significant. Our very first story comes to us from Ideogram, who just a few hours ago announced that they're ready to go to version 1.0. They've been at version 0.1 and then 0.2 for about the past six or seven months. The switch to a full number means they're ready to announce themselves. And very exciting, they have claimed they have much better coherency, much better text, and much better photorealism. They have some really great examples that I encourage you to check out on their homepage announcing it. And I have a video coming out tomorrow where I'll show you exactly what this tool can do, test it in comparison to version one and two, and test it against Midjourney, Dolly 3, Leonardo, and some stable diffusion variant. So it's very exciting to see what this tool can do. I encourage you to check this out. I think it's really exciting that they're moving to photorealism, going beyond the one trick pony status they had in the past as they were the first ones where you could create an image that had text in it. Now they're doing a lot of other things that are very, very exciting. And you can see they have some really complicated prompts that you can test such as this chicken made out of French fries and ketchup eyes and the Christmas dog and cat, which is very powerful because of the positioning to put the ball on top of the box, the dog on one side, the cat on the other, and the Christmas tree. Very hard to do. So I encourage you to run these tests. It's very exciting because Ideogram is absolutely free. You can generate 25 prompts a day, which you get four images per prompt. It's 100 free images a day. Really cool. I'm very excited by this. Make sure you subscribe so you can see tomorrow's video where I go in depth with Ideogram. Our next story comes to us from Google. They've just announced that they have a new tool that goes image to video game. Now the video game is 2D. Think Nintendo or Atari earlier, mid to 1980s at one frame per second. If you're wondering what that means, it means it's unplayable. Why do you think they made this announcement right now? Let's solve the mystery. They lost $70 billion this week because they released a chat bot last week. Now it's interesting that people are using the word woke. It's not the right word. It was historically inaccurate. It's much more important. You'd ask for images of specific historical figures and they would race swap them. I don't really like talking about this story because it makes me so uncomfortable. Their chat bot is also lying and that's a big problem. It means you cannot use their tools for your business. In the past year, they've made the three major mistakes. First, they made the mistake saying that the James Telescope was the first one to ever take a picture of the planet in another universe, which is not true. Then they made the mistake when they announced Google Gemini and made a video and turned out the video had been doctored. This is their third mistake in a year. So they're trying to cover that up by saying, hey, we have a tool that makes video games, but you can't use it. And one frame per second is terrible. Right now you're watching me at 30 frames per second. One frame per second is so slow, you would instantly turn this video off. Let's go a little deeper into the story. Their CEO says the malfunctioning Gemini is unacceptable. It wasn't an accident. There's no way that nobody in testing said, draw a picture of a Viking or draw a picture of the American Revolution. These aren't crazy images. That everyone does pictures of Vikings. How about draw a picture of the Roman Empire? You're not going to see any Romans in it. Huge thing. They're trying to play CYA because they lost $70 billion, but I think Google should consider exiting the AI game because this is a problem that's much deeper because it's consistent. They've had three missteps in 12 months. Each major announcement comes with a misstep. No, thanks. Now they are saying that they're hopeful to fix the problem in a few weeks. It's irrelevant with how fast AI news moves. I barely covered this story because this is last week's story. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not gonna cover Google tools anymore because there's no point. Every single tool they've announced has had a problem with honesty, and that means it's not useful. The worst thing an AI can do is lie to you, and that's not something you can bring into your business because that means this tool could hurt you, and I just can't do that. That goes against my code of ethics as an AI instructor. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be covering Google very much in the future. Now, our next story, which is interesting, comes to us. Adobe is announcing that they have a generative AI tool for music. I covered Suno earlier this week, which I absolutely love. If you haven't watched that video, I will post a link up above me in the card. If you haven't watched that video, I will post a link above me in the cards. I encourage you to watch that video. They give you 300 free songs per month. Very cool tool, very affordable, very interesting. Let's see what Adobe is up to. 
they add additional features where you can control tempo, intensity, patterns, and structure, and they can take a track and make it longer. They can do remixes of music. So pretty cool features or create endless loops. But you know what I don't see? Vocals. I'm not sure that this is enough to get my attention, but I want to keep it on your radar because I know a lot of you guys do have those suites of Adobe tools. This is a new announcement they've made, and it's just a question of when it's going to become completely available. And I want it on your radar because Adobe is a big platform. Our next announcement, our story comes from Pika, who's announced now we have early access to lip sync, where you can see the mouths moving along with the video. This is a feature that I demoed in a video using a different tool over a year ago. So I'm not sure why this is an announcement. They're responding to the Sora announcement. What's about AI generated video? Look at this feature we have. I don't know why anyone cares about this feature. And I think that makes sense because they have 300,000 views and don't even have 2,000 hearts. I'm not impressed by this. This is a feature that's been around for a year. All you're seeing is the camera moving closer and the mouth is moving in a way that almost looks natural. This has been around for a year. So I guess congratulations, Micah, on catching up on the competition. Our next story comes from Superhuman AI. They've now added a feature called Instant Reply, which means you can click a button and it would write the entire response email for you. I don't use this tool, but I know that a lot of people do. It's a very interesting approach to email, finding that balance between AI responding for me and maintaining my voice. It's something worth checking out. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a deep dive review of this tool. I haven't changed my email process in a while, so maybe I do need to look at this and consider it. Let me know what you guys think. Next story, very interesting, comes to us from GitHub. GitHub has a tool called Copilot. I hate this name. Everyone is calling their AI tools Copilot. You'll see a Copilot inside of Perplexity AI, which I covered yesterday. You'll see a Copilot comes from Microsoft. Now there's a Copilot from GitHub. Everyone is using the same name for different tools, and that's what I don't like. I do think GitHub was the first one to use this name, but it doesn't matter. Everyone's using it, and it's getting a little bit boring. Let's get to the story. They've now added the ability for people to add this tool, which is inside the GitHub coding tool. They have an AI that helps you write your code and write your code faster. There are alternatives for doing this with local AI tools and some other artificial intelligences, but I know a lot of people program and group code inside of GitHub. So if you're one of those people, this is an important story to know about because for a while, not everyone had access to the tool. They finally given it to everyone. And so now you can see that they've given access at the enterprise level. It costs $30 million a month per user. And they add a lot of features. This is something that should be on your radar if you're a coder. If not, you probably don't care about that story. So let's get to the next one. Lightrix has announced an AI-powered filmmaking studio to help creators visualize stories. Now, this is very interesting. I've watched a bunch of their demo videos and some people that have beta access. This is the first tool that claims to create an entire movie inside their AI. You can see multiple shots. This adds music, special effects, and even dialogue. This is the first tool that's claiming to do something more than a three-second video. They have been asked some questions about how they compare to Sora, and they say we're better. That's a very confident thing to say. And this is a very different tool. Sora's longest demonstration was about 60 seconds. This is claiming it can make a full movie, which is, let's be honest, 90 minutes. Very different. That's 90 times longer. I don't know if it lives up to its expectations. Let's take a look at their homepage. You can see they call it LTX Studio, Storytelling Transformed. And you can control everything from idea to final edits all in one platform. They're making some really big claims here. When they launch, which is going to be in about a month, they say they'll be ready by the end of March. This is either going to launch them to the moon or crash and burn. I'm excited to see which way it goes. The reason I'm covering this story is I encourage you to join the waitlist now, just in case the tool turns out to be awesome. Might as well be higher up the waitlist. They promise to be an all-in-one video editing tool. Right now, a lot of us will generate our images in one place, then animate them in another, then add the script from another platform, and then add the voices, and then add the music. And we're using five or six different tools to do each of these parts. Altex says you can do it all in one. That's a really big claim, but it could also grab them a huge amount of market share if it's true. They help with everything from storytelling to character consistency. As we know, this is the holy grail of the AI art world, everything from image generation to video generation. So if they can do this, we have the same character throughout the scenes. Very powerful, very interesting. They even talk about special effects, music, and voiceovers. I think this could be very, very interesting. I've already joined the waitlist, and I'll put a link below so you can do the exact same thing. Our final story comes to us another platform called Morph Studio, which is built on top of Stability AI. They're making some big claims. I'm not so sure about this one. I think they saw the LTX announcement. They said, send a press release to TechCrunch and some screenshots. That's how this feels to me, especially because they're talking about generating me memes. That's what we're really looking for right now. This is a text to video model. They do some really short things and you can look from their website. Same thing, they're trying to get people on their waitlist. I watched their demo video. 
it doesn't really show you what the tool can do. All it does is show the exact same image of what their storyboarding tool looks like. I have a feeling that this tool is not going to be ready in the same amount of time. I joined this waitlist as well because I need to test every single one of these tools. That's your AI news of the week from us here at Serve. No master, as always, we give you only the information you need and none of the fluff. We'll be back next week with another episode of all the AI news you need in 20 minutes or less. Please subscribe, follow, hit that bell, whatever you need to do to get notified so you can save time every single week. I read hundreds of stories and distill them down to only what you need in 20 minutes or less. This is Jonathan Green signing off. See you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked that video, I think you're going to like this one or maybe even this one. Check them out.